Hello everyone, Muckluck Douglas Bartholomew Reginald Esquire the Fourth here, and today I bring you a guide on converters. Converters primarily, well, convert one material into another, and usually can be used a limited number of times per day per converter. They are a fantastic way to get rid of excess Dragonite ore, Imperial Fragments, and Bloodstone Dust. Anyone here who has been level 80 for any period of time has likely found a lot of this stuff. First, let me show you a few examples of what I'm talking about. I'll come back to these with more details shortly. Maudry II here eats Bloodstone Dust and gives you a bag of random goodies. The Star of Gratitude eats Imperial Fragments and gives you a bag of goodies. Princess eats Dragonite Ore and gives you bags of goodies. Gleam of Sentience opens a merchant window where you can feed it combinations of the three materials or even just Unbound Magic up to six times per day per transaction. And with that, I think you get the general idea. Let's talk about where to get them. Let's visit today's wonderful webpage, which will be linked in the description down below. In my opinion, it's a great level 80 project to work on getting a converter of each type for the three main substances you will possibly have an abundance of, being Dragonite Ore, Imperial Fragments, and the Bloodstone Dust. But let's briefly go over each of them. The Candy Corn Gobbler. It's only purchasable during Halloween, and I wish I bought it last year, oh my god. By spam clicking this, you get random boosters. Click it enough times, and you can get nearly every single booster possible, including a massive increase to reward track gain in World v. World and PvP, and it stacks with the buff from the Snowflake and Zytaffy Gobblers. Note, the Snowflake and Zytaffy Gobblers don't stack with each other, but you can use either one of them with the Candy Corn. I plan to get this from the gem store the next time I'm able to do so. I'm going to briefly skip Herta and go to Maudry II. Maudry's questline gives you this converter that eats 50 bloodstone dust between 3 to 6 times per day and is obtained from Living World Season 2. The same questline will also give you an ascended backpack. Now Herta eats 250 bloodstone dust, but only one time per day. Here's the kicker though. The bag of random stuff Herta gives has a very, very small chance of having a Charged Quartz or a Calcum Amulet of the Exalted, which inside of that has a vial of liquid Aurelium, which is worth 2,000 gold in it. Oh my gosh, this is like getting a lottery ticket every day. Herta is from an achievement in Heart of Thorns and is my go-to for dumping bloodstone dust. Memory Gobbler eats the memories of battle looted from world versus world. I personally don't find this useful as memories of battle price jump drastically when value with the addition of the world versus world legendary ring Conflux, so feeding them to this converter feels like a waste. Princess. Princess eats Dragonite Ore and is from an achievement in Lion's Arch. It is very easy to do, but it does take a while. You will be running around and sniping bugs hiding in Lion's Arch. Highly recommend using a video guide for the Lion's Arch Exterminator achievement if you go to do this, of which there are multiple on YouTube. Sentient Aberration, Anomaly, Oddity, and Singularity are each from different quests in Living World Season 3. Once you have all four of them, you can combine them to make the Gleam of Sentience. Gleam takes only one inventory space and opens up a shop window which allows you to access all four of the converters that led up to it. Note, I do not recommend doing the Unbound Magic conversion. You can get more money for your Unbound Magic by buying things like miswrapped packets from the merchants. Now I'm going to rip the band-aid off right now and tell you that one of the steps of the sentient aberration sucks. It involves doing what I personally consider to be the hardest jump puzzle in the game, the Chalice of Tears, which involves jumping up the inside of an active volcano, and if you miss any jump, it means death. Now you can hire a mesmer to teleport you through it if you fancy it. I personally completed that jump puzzle for the first time after I got my prototype position rewinder, which I highly recommend if you go to do this yourself. Shards of Glory Converter sells excess PvP currency, similar to the World vs. World. I find it more worthwhile to simply sell the excess Shards of Glory on the trading post. Snowflake Gobbler or the Zytaffy Gobbler do not stack with each other. If you have one, I do not recommend getting the other one. 
It is about half the strength of the Candy Corn Gobbler in bonuses, but they do stack with each other. Star of Gratitude is only obtainable during the Christmas event, but it is the number one way of dumping Imperial Fragments into a converter. Be sure to do its very easy quest line during Christmas to get this and also the Christmas tree for your home instance, which gives a present each day. The Volatile Singularity allows you an option to convert Volatile Magic into a bag of goodies. I personally never even bothered to get this one as there are already plenty of ways in the game to convert Volatile Magic into gold, such as buying bags of trophies and selling them on the trading post with your Volatile Magic. The Fractal Reliquary lets you trade Fractal Relics each day. I do not recommend this as you need a mountain of them to get the infinite Fractal Potions, the Omni Potion, and the Fractal God title and power-ups associated with it. You don't need to be trading them in for small bags of Happy Meal toys. Although I do love Happy Meals. Karmic Converter is an insanely expensive to obtain item and requires buying many specific orange items to your account, which means you cannot sell them to obtain it. Even after that, you are giving up considerable amounts of karma for the daily goodies. There are plenty of ways to turn karma into gold without breaking your bank to get this item. I currently have no plans to ever go for this. Lay Energy Matter Converter. 10 out of 10 would recommend, and in fact I did in the Home Instance Guide. Has four tabs when fully upgraded. The first tab gives you a free item of your choosing each day. The other tabs give you ways of spending various Heart of Thorn currencies. Leyline Crystals on tab 2, Aurelium on tab 3, and Airship Parts on tab 4. You can choose one purchase per day. Note, if you have the Aurelium Home Instance node, you will be able to buy stuff from tab 3 virtually every day. Quite often, tabs 2 through 4 can have bags of obsidian in them, which is always a nice grab. The portable Magnetite Shard Exchange is obtained after you've killed every raid boss in Wing 4 on Normal and Challenge mode. It allows you to buy the ascended items that can drop from those bosses for Magnetite from a merchant window. For anyone new to raiding, Magnetite is a currency you get when you kill raid bosses. If you've killed all of these bosses on Challenge mode, you probably don't need ascended gear, and this would allow you to unlock cosmetic appearances that have been eluding you. Probably not something you would use daily. Spear Marshal's Plea is given to you after you finish the Path of Fire storyline and allows you to spend Eyes of Cormir for unidentified gear and miniatures. Most of the miniatures are worth next to nothing, except for one that is worth between one and two gold. The Tarkton Personal Delivery Portal allows you to Ecto Gamble Anywhere and is a reward for an achievement you earned for having a major Ecto Gambling problem. I don't have this. I will note that it opens a merchant window which has a sell junk button I've read, which sounds like the handiest part about it. The Collector's Edition Sandstorm, similar to the last item, allows you to gamble anywhere and is a reward from gambling a lot of money. And lastly, the Zytaffy Gobbler, which I've already done a video review on. The TLDR is that it unfortunately gives the exact same buff as the Snowflake Gobbler and does not stack with it. So if you have one, I don't recommend getting the other one. And that's all of them at the time of this recording. One note I'd like to add here is that when I am converting, I only convert what spills into my bag, meaning what I am holding after my material storage is full. I never want to be in need of bloodstone bricks, but then be out of luck because I converted all of my dust. Save yourself a buffer of each material and convert the excess is my recommendation. If you need more information on any specific converter on this list, use the wiki page I have in the description to get a breakdown of what you need. If you enjoyed this video, please consider leaving a like to help us out with the YouTube algorithm. Leave a comment if you have any tips, questions, or additional information I missed on converters for the others, and subscribe for more similar content. If you'd like to talk to me directly, you can reach me on the Discord, there is a link in the description, or on Twitch every evening. If you'd like to support this channel and the creation of future videos, our Patreon and Amazon associate links are in the description as well. That's all for today. Happy converting!